I am trying to fix my homemade helicopter because I would prefer it wasn't broken anymore. I spent months building a new drive shaft which is not likely to work, but it still looks nice, right? I proved in the last video that I have to use these needle roller bearings, but I showed they were too wobbly. To solve the wobbliness, I have made my own pins. My pins are not precision ground hardened shaft, they are a softer material. So I need to know if the softer material is going to be hard enough. I have tested this with the pins under drive load and it passed. While I was there I also retested the bronze bushes with high pressure grease, but unfortunately high pressure grease wasn't good enough to reduce the friction significantly. Phosphor bronze bushes then is still sadly a no. I fully assembled the shaft swapping guides around to try and get the inner shaft running concentric as possible. In doing so I caused a slight bind in the shaft. I found a problem. I was testing this and the load, moving it back and forwards, really just trying to, to free it up a bit before I put it on the helicopter. And it started to bind up and badly. Uh, I found this one where the needle roller is jammed in the slot. And this is a bit confusing because they certainly weren't jammed in any way before. So something has happened to cause this to jam. With that one removed, I can, I can move this under torque and it seems all right. So maybe it's just a problem with that, that single one. But the only thing I can think of that would cause this to jam in there like that is when you roll steel, it gets bigger. So if you can, if you put enough force between two bits of steel, like how you um, make panels for cars, you you stretch the metal with an English wheel. Well, I'm wondering if this is stretched, and that's now why it's jammed in there. It doesn't look too happy. I think I can actually see some cracks. See that cracking? That's what it is. 12.2, well, that was about 12.05. That's stretched. The only thing I, I can hope for is it's stretched because um, some additional preload was put on when I orientated those uh, guides for the kind of best fit. Um, it did, like I said, it was binding up a little bit, which is why I tried to free it off. So hopefully the, um, the additional force from the binding caused this problem. I've reorientated these so that this moves in and out easily and it doesn't cause this preload um, problem on one particular bearing. I've tested that, it seems fine. But now um, we've got more run out. That is now 0.6 of a mil, which means it's 0.3 of a millimeter off center. Now, I don't think that is good enough. I'm not, I'm certainly not happy with it. Uh, I can do better, but it means remaking this shaft here where I welded in the, the sleeves, I think is the cause of this run out. And if I did it a different way, I could get this better. The thing is, do I want to spend the time making another shaft when I don't know if the centrifugal forces are going to cause it to bind up anyway. I really want to know the answer to that. And I can't do this on the lathe because the lathe only runs at 670 RPM maximum. And this, this runs at 5,500. Uh, so really I want to assemble it to the helicopter and try it. The issue with doing that is I'm going to have to press in these needle rollers and getting them out again to change the shaft um, is a pain. Uh, so that's my quandary at the moment. I'll have a think. Hmm. What shall I do? Should have cleaner hands for doing that, really. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go home. Going home really works sometimes because you come back with the right decision. What I've done is sanded 50 microns off the bearing diameter and now it's a sliding fit into the universal joint yoke. 
If it has to come apart, it's easy, and when I finally decide to put it together for the foreseeable future, I will press in new bearings. I am finally ready for a test. It's, uh, it's been a long time, so I'm a little nervous. Now the purpose of this test is to find out whether there's too much vibration in this slide in action here, and if it binds up with central petal forces uh, pushing the bearing against the outside of the slot. Not intending to run it at full RPM. Um, I'm half expecting not to get to full RPM. Um, if the vibration is too high, I'll cut it off way before that. You've seen in the last video that I tested just one of these screws to over 300 kilograms, which would hold on to this guy by itself. Uh, we have 12 of those, so I don't think there's any chance of one of those coming off, uh, but I will be wearing a helmet just in case. I want to be able to keep an eye on the shaft while I try and move it forward and backwards. And if there's any binding on here, uh, I'll, I'll know about it. This definitely takes me back to the first testing I did, which isn't on video. Well, that was done before the YouTube channel, so now you're getting to see uh, how I went about it. There seems to be a fueling issue, like the fuel pump isn't working very well. I'm manually pumping the primer bulb here to pump fuel into the carburetor float chambers so I can increase the RPM again. First test then, pretty good. Uh, there was no binding I could detect. We got to about 700 rotor RPM maximum. And like I said, there was nothing really I could detect. Maybe right at the top, you could start to feel some resistance, but this is unloaded. And as soon as you put the blades on, you know, you're loading up these bearings in a sideways direction and there's gonna be even less force trying to bind it up. So I think that's, a good result. Maximum RPM uh, rotor is 780. That would put the, the engine at 5,500, I think. Uh, so we're just about there, and the vibration didn't look too bad. I don't know what you thought. Uh, right at the top, it seemed pretty good. 
I think there was a bit just below that where there was a bit of movement. Um, but it's not too bad. Could be better, but not too bad. I can't do any more testing today because there is an issue with the starter recoil. I think the plastic spiral is slipping on the shaft. What is next then? Uh, I've got to mount the front engine mounts that is clamped at the moment. The back ones are bolted, but the, uh, the new front ones need to be drilled. I'm actually going to change this tube. This is 3mm wall tube, but it, uh, it only needs to be 1.6, so save a little bit of weight. Uh, I need to move the engine slightly so that this dry shaft is in line. At the moment, it's off to the left by about 1.6 degrees. I want it less than one degree, uh, but when the torque is applied to this head, it moves that way. Uh, so I need to sort of guess where the engine needs to be so that when it's under, under load, it straightens up. Uh, also, I've got to, uh, the plan is to drill these screw heads uh, for wire locking. That needs to be done. What else? Uh, probably a load of stuff. Temptation is just to whack the blades on and give it a test. But uh, no, there's quite a bit to do before then. I have to decide whether I'm going to accept this tube the way it is. I mean, vibration, looking at the video, it looks pretty good. So do I need to change it? I know it's not as good as it could be. So I don't know, I'll have to think about that one. Uh, I do want this encased. <clears throat> this dry shaft, I want a tube going all the way around. That needs to be bolted to the frame or maybe welded. Some of it can be welded. Uh, so a tube that hinges. So I'll cut both sides of the tube, have a hinge so I can access this. But I want it completely shrouded from myself. Uh, I still don't like this dry shaft and how fast it spins. And I feel much happier if it was completely encased. At the moment, the tilting of the head left and right in row is only two and a half degrees. That needs to be four degrees. So I need to retest that four degrees and check this uh, velocity issue with the universal joint. I don't honestly think it's going to be a problem. It's only 27 RPM over 5,500. Uh, you know, of course, RPM being revolutions per minute, that's 27 more, uh, variation. That's 13 up, 13 down. That makes it 26. Uh, I don't think that is significant, but I'd like to do that, get the engine running again, get that four degrees, and just check this doesn't sort of do any wobbling left to right. That would be what it would do, I should imagine. The exhausts are another issue. And if you've watched a lot of the videos, you know that these exhausts crack due to the vibration. Uh, I can't stop it. It cracks in those, these corners here, both sides. And the only way to solve that is to change the material. The plan is to make a single one. At the moment, there's two of them. Make a single one out of steel. Just have it coming off one side. And uh, that will solve the issue. That's a long-term plan. I'm not going to solve that right now. I want to go through more testing before I do that. A question I get quite a lot is why don't I use a spline for the plunging of the shaft? That's what's used on most vehicles to solve this problem. So why can't I use one? Now, I have explained this a few times before, but because the question keeps coming back up, I thought I'd just do it again. So on this shaft here, we have... Uh, a certain amount of travel. So I need 60 mil. So to start with, 60 mil leaves this bit on the end here at maximum travel. Uh, we can see we've got some play at that. So I would need a longer spline. I'm sure I could find a longer spline, but there's another issue and that is friction. As soon as you put this under torque, there's too much friction and it, it won't move. And I can demonstrate that now just by putting some force on here. And I'll try and pull it. I can't get it to move. I have tried polishing this. I've tried using high pressure grease and the result is the same. There is, however, a chance that this will still work. And that's to do with the sort of vibration you get from spinning this at 5,500 RPM. Um, it's possible that a little bit of vibration could just wiggle this free and it doesn't bind up. The thing is, I've, I've been able to, unable to convince myself to go in a direction which I think won't work. Um, I'd rather go in a direction where I think will work. 
because uh, it's quite a lot of work just to try this. Uh, but if there's some sort of issue with what I've designed, then I'll have to rethink and maybe I will try the spline route. Uh, that's the situation with the spline.